Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video we will discuss late code question 87 that says scramble string. So here you are given two string s1 and s2 and you need to verify that s1 is a scramble string of s2 or not or if s2 is a scramble string of s1 or not. Okay, you just need to verify that and both the strings would be of the same length. Now what is the meaning of scramble? So guys, if the length of a string is greater than 1, then we can do the following to make a string scramble. So what we can do is we can divide the string into two substring x and y and where s is equal to x plus y correct x is the one substring and y is the another part of the string so y is another substring now second thing is we can decide to swap the substring same we can either keep s is equal to x plus y or we can divide it y plus x uh, means we can uh, swap it okay we can swap it now uh, we again apply the step one that is again dividing the uh, string into two substring for both x and y so yeah this we continue up till uh, all the different possible substrings are formed okay and until the size of our substring is one we will continue this and we will check if we have found a scramble string uh, that is equal or not got it the question is pretty much simple and straightforward they have already given what we have to do and they have also stated that we have to do this recursively so yeah since we are trying to find out different possibilities of a given string we do have to uh, make a recursion function call also yeah they have stated, every, stated everything correctly uh, and so if you take a look at the first example so here you have one string s1 great and s2 r g e a t okay now for this let's say uh, g r e a t so if you divide this string g r and e a t this is x and y okay now again you do a recursion you divide this x into g and r okay this is x dash and y dash okay now let's say you swap it you swap it then it becomes rg okay and you return it so rg e a t you form this string this string is formed and it is equal to s2 so we get s1 equal to s2 correct so this is how we we, uh, we return true here because we can get a scramble string from a given string s1 okay now if you take a look at this example a b c d e and c a e b d so here uh, let's say uh, you break something like this a b c and d e then you scramble this let me see you again break this let's say uh, you break this in a b and c okay then you swap it then it will become c a b and this would be d e okay so whatever you do here guys you won't be able to form this string see you can try out different possibilities here um, you can go even further like uh, you can also divide this uh, c and a b into different part and this d into different parts then swap it okay let's say you swap this and this both means this is one particular string this is one particular string at a point so whatever you do guys you won't be able to get this uh, s2 from s1 correct so yeah we will return false here now if you take a look at the third example both the strings are same and in this case in that case directly written true okay nothing much to think so yeah guys here what we are doing here we are simply uh, breaking down the string into uh, two strings x and y and checking if they are scrambled or not so if one thing the question tells that uh, we have to check whether s2 is a scramble string of s1 see they are telling that s2 is scramble of s1 uh, this we need to check yes or no but instead also we can also check s1 is scramble of s2 this will also result the same thing correct s2 is a scramble of s1 or s1 is a scramble of s2 both are similar statement and both will give same result so what we do is we uh, so from this we will take both s1 as well as s2 okay we try to find both x and y and similarly x and y that means we will divide this both s1 and s2 into two substrings x and y then we check we will check whether x is same as y and whether y means this y is same as this y okay right we will check this then also we would also swap like y and x y and x then check then again run a scramble string recursion on this this again recursively calls uh, the function on this substring and we will check so yeah we, what we will do is we will check for different possibilities of s1 and s2 parallelly we will check for both these strings parallelly okay and 
So this is the recursion part. The what uh, whatever this asks this question that divide the string into two substring x and y, then check for uh, uh, check they are equal or not, and then try to swap it and then check for they are equal or not. We will do that thing. But that is the recursion part. Now if we want to memoize it, how we will memoize it? See. Now what is what would be the unique combination here? See. Uh, let's say S1 would be A B C D E, S2 would be C A B E D. Okay, something like this. So at any point of time, let's say t is equal to uh, five seconds. I mean, in the fifth round of recursion, let's say s1 would be a c d e b and s2 would be c d uh, e b a. Okay, let's say this is the uh, state of s1 and s2 in the fifth round of recursion. Now, if you want to memorize it, your answer, then how will you store it? How will you check for unique combination? So s1 plus s2 will give you a unique combination. This would be your key. And at that point of time, see, we are trying to generate different possibilities of S1 and S2. So at a particular time, S1 plus S2 would be unique. This would be unique. So we can use this as a key and uh, its value would be your answer. Whether true or false would be your answer. Correct? So yeah, we are trying, we will use uh, the current state of S1 and S2 as a key and uh, the value true or false would be its answer, key and value pair. So to store this key and value pair, we will use an order map. Okay? We will use unordered map. So yeah, now let's uh, let me move on to the coding part. See guys, because the intuition for this question was directly given in the question that we have to do recursion, and all the other statements were also given into the question that divide the string into two substring, then check for so check by swapping, and uh, randomly swap that either you can check for not swapping and either you can check for swapping. So all that thing we can directly do in the question. There is much not, nothing much to the figure out in the intuition and part and nothing much to figure out in the approach part so yeah, now let's directly move on to the coding part so in this coding part uh, this is the function that we have given so we first check that if both the sides are not equal then return false else call this function is scrambled s1 and s2 so here we took this unordered map string comma bool the string where we would store the key and bool would be our answer and this is our map so here we first check if s1 dot size is not equal to s2 dot size then return false let's say n is equal to size now the size are same after this point and if s1 equal equal to s2 or n equal to 0 okay this is the case if s1 equal equal to s2 means both the strings are same or there is no character left then we will return true see here we are dividing into so string into x and y so if we would reach at some point where there is no character in x then at that point also we would return 0 the size of a string is 0 then we check s1 plus this string plus s2 as a key this we take as a key right as we discussed for earlier that this would be the unique combination of s1 and s2 uh, at a given point and yeah combining them we will get we will take a key now we will find if the key is already present in the map or not if it is present then we will return the answer then means here we are trying to reduce the number of sub problems see we in the dp we also used to check the dp of i j is not equal to minus one then return dp of i j yeah remember this is something we used to do in the dp we so the same thing we are doing here if the map already has a key then we would return the answer okay now here i took one flag or you can say answer variable that is boolean and marked it as false initialize it as false now this is the for loop where we are generating different substrings so substrings are from one to n so yeah if uh, so for the first first condition we are taking is if the strings are swept so that means uh, uh, we are trying to check for the substring 0 to i and for s to n minus i to i see we are swapping here same for i to n minus i and 0 to n minus i so we are swapping correct got this we have swapped the first part to the second part here and check the second part of s2 with the first part of s1 means x with a y x of string 1 with a uh, y of string 2 and here we are checking a uh, y of string 1 with a x of string 2 so the, here we are checking for the swap part and we are checking if the answer what is the answer if both are true then also then only this if condition will pass and then at that point we will make flag equals to true and break see why we why we write break because we got the answer we uh, we got the answer true so we don't have to move forward correct we don't have to divide the strings again okay so now for the unswept part what we are doing we are checking for this x of 1 and x of 2 like 0 to y and 0 to y and y of 1 and y of 2 right we are not swapping the same thing and if this case is true then we mark flag as true and we simply break and at the end we, uh, we just stored the, our answer in this dp or the map whatever you can say and we return the flag 
So yeah, this was uh, the coding part for this question. Now talking about the time and space complexity. So guys, uh, talking about the time complexity. So uh, for each string, let's say for a string S1, if you want to generate all different possible substring, two substring like X part and Y part, if you want to generate all different possible, then its time complexity would be big O of N square. Okay. And you, we are running a recursion loop on both this X part and the Y part, recursion loop on X part and Y part. So that will all, all, also uh, increase the time complexity by n square. So overall time complexity would be big of n to the power 4. And the space complexity here would be big of n cube. Why n cube? Because this, mon this many different possible key would be present. Okay. Got it? Uh, now if you are still com confused why n cube see. Uh, overall, uh, for how many different combination of substring x and y are there? Big of n square. And total length is n. So multiplying this, you will get n cube. These are the different possible uh, substring combination of a given string, and the and the variation in length can be from let's say zero up till n. So this is your answer. This is your space complexity. So yeah, that's all for this video. If you guys have any doubt, then do let me in the comment section. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.